Greetings and welcome to this second Sunday of Christmas video worship experience. As we continue to celebrate and rejoice in the good news of the birth of Jesus Christ. Simultaneously, the COVID-19 pandemic continues to surge around us. So we urge you to continue to wear face masks, wash your hands, practice physical distance and shelter in place so that we, together with our neighbors, can stay well and save lives, which is our Christian witness and service. Within the profound words from today's reading from John lies the simple message that God is revealed in a human person. Though we may try to understand how the Word existed with God from the beginning of time, the wonder we celebrate at Christmas is that the Word continues to dwell and shine among us. Christ comes among us in the gathered assembly, the scriptures, the waters of new birth, and the bread and the wine. Through these ordinary gifts, we receive the fullness of God's grace and truth. The light of Christ shines for all to see, and the darkness did not overcome it. What does Jesus Christ mean to you? Because of the COVID-19 coronavirus surge in California and Nevada County, Peace Lutheran Church has suspended in-person Sunday worship until there is a lower infection rate along with the county returning to at least the red tier, where the COVID-19 coronavirus is only substantial. During this video worship experience, we're not able to receive an offering. Financial offerings can be sent through the mail, electronically, or online on the Peace Lutheran Church website. If you would like to be a sponsor of these video worship experiences, contact the church office. We now move to a time for confession and forgiveness. When we remember our need to die to sin and rise with Christ, which is the promise of baptism. Sin permeates us and the world which separates us from God and from one another. Jesus came to reconcile us to God and to one another. In dealing with sin, Jesus generously offers us love, reconciliation, forgiveness, and new life. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who was in the beginning, who makes a dwelling among us, who covers us with justice and mercy. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. We now offer a time of silence for reflection and confession. This is a good time to touch that pause button below the video screen. When you complete your time of silence for reflection and confession, touch that very same play button below the video screen. God of goodness and loving kindness, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have turned away from your invitation to new life. We have turned away from the lowly and the downtrodden. In your abundant mercy, forgive us our sins, those we know and those known only to you. For the sake of the one who came to live among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. Hear the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us all our sins, not through our own work, but through Jesus Christ, made known to all people. With all who come to the manger, rejoice in this amazing gift of grace. Amen. Oh, 
Let us pray. Almighty God, you have filled all the earth with the light of your incarnate word. By your grace, empower us to reflect your light in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're happy to have you worshiping with us today. The first reading is from Jeremiah, and God promises to bring Israel back to its land from the most remote parts of exile. God will give gladness instead of sorrow. A reading from Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together. A great company. They shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by the brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd of a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
the Holy Gospel for this second Sunday of Christmas, according to John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become the children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God, whose word became incarnate in Jesus Christ, and who comes into the world and meets us as our creator, redeemer, and sustainer, Amen. There was a time when I served on the churchwide staff at the Chicago offices of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. And I have to admit that today I am glad that I'm not in snowy Chicago. I recall a dreary December in Chicago when it was cold, cloudy, overcast, with occasional snow for much of the month. I was getting tired of this Chicago winter weather. I felt lethargic, grumpy, impatient, and ambivalent about work. And on top of all of this, I had to go to Minneapolis, of all places, for a meeting. I wondered, who had the bright idea to have a meeting in Minneapolis in December? But it was a meeting I couldn't miss. So I got on the plane. I wasn't happy about this meeting. I really didn't want to go to Minneapolis. I expected more of the same dreary winter weather. The plane took off. The ascent was smooth, uneventful, and eventually the plane broke through the clouds. As soon as the plane broke through the clouds, the cabin was immediately filled with light. All at once, I was amazed. Surprised, excited, energized, and glad to experience sunlight again. In this plain cabin, there wasn't a dark, dreary spot to be found. Everyone was bathed in sunlight. I could sense everyone's spirits being lifted by the sunlight. Now I was glad to be on this plane, even though it was going to Minneapolis. I would admit, though, that the meeting in Minneapolis was productive and it went very, very well. When I returned to Chicago, I was energized, enthusiastic, and ready to face the challenges of ministry. 
We are people who need light and who seek light. I think that one of the reasons we seek and need light is because, well, there is darkness in the world. Darkness comes in many shapes and can take the form of violence, broken relationships, people hurting other people, crime, terrorism, war, prisons, homelessness, hunger, disease, illness, addiction, discrimination, unemployment, sexism, hate groups, racism, evil, a pandemic, and the list goes on and on and on of all the things that we consider the dark side of the world. And we don't have to go far to experience the darkness in the world. Whatever darkness exists in the world, as human beings, we bring it into the church. As a matter of fact, darkness is even in and among us. When we mess up, we fail, we fall short, we're imperfect human beings, we fail to do the things we ought to do, and we do the things that we don't want to do. At times, we don't trust God, and there are times when we even turn away from God. In the face of darkness, we seek light that helps us to deal with the darkness of the world. We need light to counteract the darkness around, among, and in us. We need light to open us to, the, to change and to possibilities. We seek light to transform the darkness, which points to another reason why we seek light. We seek light because of what it does. When there is a blackout, have you noticed what many of us do in response to that blackout? When there's a blackout, we seek light, any form of light. Light a match or light a candle in the midst of that blackout. Or we look for that flashlight or a lantern. We break a glow stick. Or we turn on a mobile phone and use the flashlight application on that mobile phone. When there's darkness, we seek out any and every form of light that we can find. I'm always amazed what a simple nightlight can do to help us deal with the darkness of light, night. We've all heard that expression, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Have you noticed that no matter how long that tunnel is, as long as we can see a speck of light at the end of that tunnel, we have hope. We can see possibilities. We know with light on our side, we can overcome the darkness and the end is near. It's like every time we hear that word vaccine, while we work hard to keep our distance from the COVID-19 coronavirus. Light has the power to empower us to face and deal with the darkness in the world and in us. Light exposes and points out the darkness. Light provides hope and possibilities for changing the darkness. Light energizes us to work for change and to be part of the solution. Light supports courage in the face of darkness. Light brings us together. Light pushes the darkness away from us. And I think that these are reasons why the Magi, the wise men from the East, followed a star. These wise men followed a star a light which would lead them to a brighter light whom we know today as Jesus Christ. During this Christmas season, we celebrate and experience the Word made flesh in the person of Jesus Christ. We proclaim that Jesus is God with us. And today on this second Sunday of the Christmas season, we focus on Jesus Christ being manifested as light. At the Transfiguration, Jesus shined like the blinding light of the sun. On the road to Damascus, Paul experienced the risen Jesus Christ as a blinding bright light. John's Gospel to the proclaims that Jesus is the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Here at worship, we light candles 
as signs of the light of Christ among us. At Christmas Eve worship services, the tradition is that the lights are dimmed and we sing Silent Night while holding lit candles. At Christmas Eve, we proclaim through lit candles and song that the light of Christ came into the world in the birth of Christ. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, and the light of Christ reveals God's grace, manifests God's love, and keeps hope alive. Jesus' light shines among us and was passed on to us at each of our baptisms. At Holy Baptism, Peace Lutheran Church gives a baptismal candle to every newly baptized person. The baptismal candle symbolizes and proclaims to the newly baptized person and to all the people who are gathered for that baptism that we all have received the light of Christ. And we too, all of us, are lights for the world. Jesus' light empowers us to shine. And as we shine, we can sing a very simple song that we all know. You know, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. And there are a number of verses, but we are reminded that we have a light then we let it shine. And that light was given to us by Jesus. So how will each of us shine? Our light shines when we love our neighbors as we love ourselves. When we forgive each other and we, when we forgive other people. When we offer to work for reconciliation. When we tell others the story of Jesus. When we feed the hungry or help the homeless when we work for peace and justice, when we listen to and respect people, which we need more of in this divided nation, when we wear a face mask in the midst of this pandemic, the light shines, when we build up community and develop relationships, the light shines through us. In other words, if Jesus makes a difference in each of our lives, we need to show it and we need to let our light shine to show it. How will we let the light of Jesus Christ shine through us? The important thing is that we each shine and we shine together. It's amazing what a little light can do. It's amazing what God can do with a little bit of light shining through people. And this same light of Christ will light the path on which Peace Lutheran Church will travel as it reaches out and ministers in the neighborhood around us. We are called to let our lights shine so that others can see and experience God. Stephen Charleston, who is the retired Episcopal Bishop of Alaska and a Choctaw elder wrote, let it grow in us, this light. Let it grow in all of our hearts, the light of our love for one another, let it grow and get stronger. Let it not be dimmed, but increased, becoming ever more radiant, reaching out to enfold all people who need its blessing so badly. Let it heal us, this wondrous light. Let its love heal us of our fear and sadness, so we may rejoice again in the simple pleasure of being alive, honoring those we have lost, lifting up those we celebrate, feeling community knit itself around us. Let it free us, this light, this powerful light of the Spirit. Let it open the cage of despair in every mind, releasing our children to live in joy, allowing us to fly once again, free in the open sky of our hope, unafraid of the past that falls far beneath us as we reach for the light, this single shining light, the same light that is already encircling you even as you finish hearing these words. Howard Thurman, a theologian and pastor wrote, when the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and the princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, 
the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among brothers and sisters, to make music in the heart. Jesus is the light of the world. The light of Jesus Christ shines in the world and in us. Through Christ, we are now light for the world. And this light shines at Peace Lutheran Church and at every other church in the world. John proclaims to us, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. Nothing, nothing can separate us from the light of Jesus Christ who shines in, around, and among us. Amen. Together, let us confess the faith that we share by using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Joining our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Redeeming God, you gather together your people from the farthest parts of the earth. Protect your church from stumbling. 
Let it not be overcome by sorrow, division, or despair. Make us radiant with goodness that we might live always to the praise of your glory. Sorry, I'll start again. Joining our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Redeeming God, you gather together your people from the farthest parts of the earth. Protect your church from stumbling. Let it not be overcome by sorrow, division, or despair. Make us radiant with goodness that we might live always to the praise of your glory. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You bring together heaven and earth. All creation testifies to your splendor. Hold the ecosystems of this earth in delicate balance from coastlands to farmlands, forests to wetlands, deserts to rainforests. Show us new ways to live in harmony with the world around us. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You overflow with grace upon grace. Expand the imaginations of those who serve in positions of authority. Open their hearts to the needs of their nations and their communities. Protect all those in harm's way and those risking danger for the sake of others. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You bring consolation to those who are weary. Embrace those who feel excluded or exhausted, especially the health care workers. Accompany those living with chronic illness. Sustain those who must isolate. Comfort, strengthen, and refresh Doris, Carla, Crystal, Bob Eckblad, and Bob Lenhard, and Crystal. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You come to us in the beauty of darkness and of light. Bring justice and reconciliation to communities divided by oppressions and misuse of power. Guide us to speak holy words of advocacy and truth. Help us to honor your image in one another. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Continue to be with Pastor Christian as he and Sabina prepare to join us here at peace. May the pathway be cleared for their entry from Canada. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Even though we have had many struggles this past year, we have had many blessings too. Help us remember them as we look forward in hope for the good possibilities in this new year. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You turn our mourning into joy. We give thanks for all the saints who have died in faith. In the fullness of time, gather us all together in your mercy. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let us pray the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
receive this blessing. Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaimed joy through the angels, sent the shepherds with good news, and led the Magi by a star. Bless you this day through word made flesh. Amen.
thank you for worshiping with us today here in Grass Valley, California. May Christ's light shine throughout the world. Go in peace. Share the gift of Jesus. Thanks be to God.